Hello! In this DCS tutorial, we'll cover the external features of the FA-18C Hornet in preparation for the upcoming DCS module. The single seat Charlie model or C model of the Hornet has had extensive upgrades to its systems as compared to the older A model. Besides covering the various antennas and probes, we'll also cover the various control surfaces on the Hornet. Okay, let's start off by going over the basic control surfaces on the F-18. Starting at the front, you'll notice that the wings seem to come forward in the design coming toward the cockpit. These two areas on the right and left are called the LEX, or a LEX, which means leading edge extension. Uh, these are responsible for some of the F-18's more unique aerodynamic properties particularly its ability to use pretty high angles of attack. And if we move up the fuselage, beside the dorsal spine you'll notice two slots and these are for the BLAD or boundary layer air discharge and they help eliminate excess air that will build up next to the engine intakes. Um, now on the front of the wings you'll notice some leading edge slats and on the back of the wings on the outside you have your ailerons and on the inside you have your flaps. Now these are more of flapperons because all of the control surfaces on the F-18 are integrated to its fly-by-wire system which means that these don't necessarily have to be used for flaps. It all depends on what the computer decides is the best way to operate the plane. Um, moving around the F-18 we have our rudders or tail fins and beside them down here we have the horizontal stabilizers and that's basically it for the control surfaces other than the uh, exhaust nozzles which adjust according to engine power like most modern fighters okay now let's start out with some of the rest of the Hornet's external features uh, it's not really an external feature but starting at the front we have the radome and uh, you have either an ANAPG-65 radar or the upgraded ANAPG-73 radar and that depends on the particular upgrade that the Hornet has. Um, starting at the front at the top we have the gun or the F-18 and on each side of the gun hole is the air vents for the gas that the gun produces. Uh, these are meant to direct the gas that the gun fires uh, away from the canopy somewhat and also away from the air intakes. Uh, moving up a little bit we have the IFF antennas. These are informally known as bird slicers. Uh, moving over the canopy we have these two RWR uh, antennas and these antennas are part of the ANALQ165 uh, RWR. Um, on each side of these we have these LEX fences is what they're called and they were put on the Hornet in order to stabilize some problems that were had uh, with the um, the vertical tail fins. Um, they were getting too much stress and so these were put there to help with the airflow and it turned out to be a pretty simple solution to a problem in the design. Uh, Moving over this way we see some air vents and moving back and looking this way we have on the left we have a tachyon antenna 
in the center we have an IFF um, radio and uh, data link antenna and right here this small little dome right there is a GPS antenna all right now working our way back uh, looking straight down you can see the air brake and now looking at the tail fins we have several features um, we have actually let's go on this side look at this one because it has more features starting at the top we have the ANALQ165 high band receiving antenna uh, beneath that in the middle we have the ANALQ67 rear warning antenna and beneath that the low band ANALQ165 antenna uh, beneath that we also have the fuel dump vent and then right there we have an anti-collision light uh, the front anti-collision lights are located on the Lexus next to the Lex fences and that's it for the top now let's work our way across the side of the Hornet and starting on the side of the Hornet we can see these Ford RWR antennas. We can see the night formation light strips. Uh, right here we can see the angle of attack probe and below it we can see the air data probe. Um, if we look up right here we can see the area for the uh, refueling probe. Uh, moving down we can see next to the engine intake we can see the section for the BLAD and inside of there are some intakes for the cabin pressurization systems and for the air conditioner. Uh, if we move further down this way, actually first these grids here, these um, vents are what actually let the built up air around the engine intakes escape into the BLAD then moving further down we can see this vent for the air uh, for the starter turbine air exhaust and right here we can see a little detail uh, this is the engine lubrication gauge or the engine lubricate lubricator gauge uh, right here we can see more whoops we can see more uh, formation light strips as well as up here on the rudders all right, now let's take a look at the landing gear. And looking at the front landing gear, we can see the launch bar, which is lowered in order to connect to a catapult on an aircraft carrier. We can see the nose wheel steering mechanism, which is controlled by the rudder pedals. We can see above that angle of attack lights, which are used for uh, landing signal officers. They actually will watch that in order to see what the angle of attack is for the Hornet. And above that, we can see the landing light, the landing gear light. And in the back, you can see the rear landing gear. And you might notice just how uh, built up they are because of the harsh landings that occur on aircraft carriers. Okay, now we can take a look at the underside of the Hornet. And uh, we can start at the nose. Looking here, we can see the first antenna for the uh, ANALQ165 and then behind that you can see the five pointy antennas those are for the ANALR67 radar warning system uh, a little bit behind that you can see the uh, UHF IFF antenna just like what that was on the top of the Hornet um, moving further down here we can see just some more duplicates of the RWR, TACAN, and radio antennas. Just the ones on the bottom. And then moving further down, um, in the middle of the fuselage, we can see these chaff and flare dispensers. Then moving further down past some more vents and uh, cooling vents, an exhaust vents we can see this exhaust for the APU or auxiliary power unit and then of course moving further down we have uh, what is a very well-known feature of uh, carrier operating aircraft the hook the resting hook and now let's take a quick look at the different stations on the aircraft 
The F-18 has a total of nine weapon stations, numbered from left to right when facing in the direction of the Hornet, or in other words, from port to starboard. Weapon stations 1 and 9 are only used for either sidewinders and their variants of sidewinders, or air data probes for dogfighting and training. Stations 2, 3, 7, and 8 are probably the most versatile ones as they are the wing stations. These can be split for different kinds of weapons to be able to carry more than one weapon on them, but that depends on the type of weapon. Stations 3 and 7 are capable of carrying external drop tanks or fuel tanks. The, the side fuselage stations, which are 4 and 6, are usually used for targeting pods and things like that. However, you can also carry radar guided missiles there. And the center station, or station 5, while it's usually used for an external drop tank, can be used for other weapons and can sometimes, with particular bombs, be split to carry two. Alright, well, that's it for uh, the external features of the F-18, and I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, a lot of people have been responding to my last videos on the, uh, on the cockpit, and a lot of helpful things were said. Um, I did make a few mistakes that are worth mentioning. Uh, the anti-G valve in the oxygen system is not for regulating the oxygen system, but for regulating oxygen to the anti-G suit. Uh, I missed that in the manual. And another thing that I missed that I asked if anyone else knew was one of the switches on the HUD control panel. Uh, I didn't know what it did. Uh, I did have some responses on the DCS forums and found out that that is actually for displaying the forward-looking infrared on the HUD. Well, anyway, I hope this video was helpful and that uh, y'all enjoyed learning about the Hornet.